So Friedrich Schleiermacher um, is a colleague of Hegel. If, if I understand things correctly, I, I believe that they had personal contact uh, as fellow professors. Um, Schleiermacher was a theologian who taught within the same town and I think at the same college even as, as uh, Hegel at the same time. So they would have um, communication and their ideas, uh, well, it seems that Schleiermacher is heavily influenced by, by Hegel. And Schleiermacher is, is the, uh, known as the father of modern liberal Christianity. So in Germany especially, there developed um, this Protestant theology in the wake of Schleiermacher, and there were some some people uh, before him, but he really, you know, he, he was, his approach to being critical, to being a critical theologian was interesting because he wasn't antagonistic to Christianity. He argued that he was presenting authentic Christianity, but the version of Christianity he presents is highly disturbing to most ordinary believers. Um, but then this became, especially in Germany, the theology that was taught in schools of theology. And so you would have uh, these liberal theologians who went to school and then became even pastors of local churches. And the theology of the pastor who was giving the sermons on Sunday and everything was often radically different from the theology of the people sitting in the pews who had a kind of more uh, naive, uh, simplistic way of looking at things. And these, uh, you know, these liberal theologians had a sophisticated philosophical way of, of thinking about the Christian faith. And Schleiermacher's biggest book is called The Christian Faith, and it's uh, 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 a well-argued uh, dissection of Christian theology in this kind of abstract philosophical way. It's, it is pretty convincing, for, you know, me, uh, I mentioned before that I was uh, a Quaker and um, deeply involved in, in theology at, at, in my earlier stages, uh, you know, I started out as a theology student and then, and then went into philosophy. Um, you know, as a, someone who is very familiar with theology, with Christian theology, and kind of went through an evolution uh, myself, you know, Schleiermacher really speaks to the experience uh, that I had. And um, and so what, what he argues in this book is that the essence of religion, and so he wants to say, um, he wants to really talk about religion like from a world religion sort of perspective, but he's not going to give up his, um, you know, ethnocentric attachment to Protestant Christianity. He believes that Protestant Christianity is the, the, the best embodiment of religion. Um, and so to the degree that he is saying that from some objective standpoint uh, against other forms of religion, that doesn't, that doesn't seem to fly. But for someone who has uh, grown up within a particular tradition, you can't just you can't just change religious traditions, right? Uh, that doesn't make sense. So, so you know, he sticks with Christianity, and we, if we just think of him as um, being some sort of authentic believer that's attached to a particular form of religion, and then tries to show the universal essence of that religion, then I think it 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 works uh, to some degree. Um, uh, it's not as, you know, it's not as uh, 
as silly as it might sound to, to us, you know, now in 2021, where hardly anybody is an authentic believer in religion, right? There's just, that's very hard to find in um, United States culture of, of this time. Um, but if we, you know, take him at his word and think, you know, project ourselves back into this history where theology is taken much more seriously, um, I think we can get on board with him. And so what he argues is that the essence of religion is this feeling of absolute dependence. And he does talk about feeling, that the essence of religion is a feeling. It's an emotion. It's an emotional state. And that emotional state is an emotional state of feeling absolutely dependent upon God. Okay, and, and that's, that's, um, that's where this feeling could be universalized in all sorts of religious traditions. Uh, but he does argue that monotheism is the highest form of religion, you know, so, so there is an ethnocentrism here. Um, uh, but I think also that ethnocentrism has a rhetorical kind of purpose in that he is speaking to true, you know, Protestant believers, you know, he was a, a preacher, you know, so he never stopped preaching and never stopped trying to connect with the ordinary person in the pews. And so even in this more philosophical, theological work that very you know, few people sitting in the pews were gonna read, he still has this connection to an authentic uh, Christianity that's practiced. And I think he wants to bring over other preachers to this theology, which in fact he does. I mean, this, you know, that's why he's the father of liberal Christianity. So there's a rhetorical aspect to this where he's like, I'm a, no, I still believe in Christianity. I'm not like, I'm not arguing against Christianity. I'm like, oh, I'm all in. Um, but then he does universalize it in ways that, that, you know, we could talk about it in terms of uh, maybe Taoism or um, Hinduism. Vedanta. Um, I don't think Buddhism, at least Theravada Buddhism would fly, but, um, but there are lots of religious traditions that we can make this work within, uh, including Islam, for example. Okay. Uh, which is a monotheistic religion. So, okay. Um, uh, now, well, I'll have more to say. Islam actually is a good example and I'll have more to say about that. Uh, so now the ego, uh, he sees, and so he develops an, an idea, a, a, a theology of self-consciousness, very much along the lines of Hegel, that the individual, uh, the ego, so, you know, we're th kind of thinking about the Cartesian ego, uh, you know, ego cogito, I think, um, is an individualized manifestation of universal reason, okay? But the ego is also both mind and body. So just like I was explaining with Hegel, Schleiermacher believes that really the soul or the mind or the spirit is both mind and body, the person, is both mind and body. And, uh, and so, you know, he is trying to present Christianity as, as a vehicle for the self-conscious sublimation that Hegel talks about. Uh, so he's, he's embedding Hegelian self-consciousness into Christianity and, and then, uh, showing how it all works out in a fairly traditional way within uh, Lutheran theology. Okay. Um, so then what we get is that the ego is the individualized manifestation of universal reason 
and the universe, that the human being is a microcosm of the universe. And if we think about God as being the mind of the universe, as I've suggested before, then the human being is like a, a small model of the universe, which does fit, you know, very nicely with uh, Protestant um, Lutheran theology, because, for example, in the Garden of Eden story with Adam and Eve, um, God says, uh, uh, we have created them in our image. We have created them male and female. Um, so that Adam and Eve are, you know, as humanity is conceived as the image of God, which would mean like the idol of God. Uh, so in, in Judaism, God is not depicted as an idol, like the, like an idol worship. There's no idols. There's no depictions of God. Um, but in some sense, the human is the image of God. The human is the idol that represents God in the world. Um, so this Schleiermacher, you know, sort of thing, you know, there are ways of, of making this work. Um, not everybody, most, I would say, most uh, Christians in the United States who are Protestant are not going to go along with this, but, um, but they're, they're not going to argue against it either. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So that's quite interesting. And uh, and then and then Schleiermacher, and, and this is what I don't have in my outline, but when I, I mentioned Islam made me think that this is a good point. And then and then what makes Christianity unique as a monotheistic religion is the phenomenon of Jesus himself, where God becomes manifest in the world as an individualized person. And so this is like, Jesus is an embodiment of this message that you are the image of God. You are a microcosm version of God and the universe, your body and your soul together as a self-conscious uh, higher being is, you know, a representation or, a, or, or a, a copy, a small copy of the big picture, the big God picture. Okay. Um, Okay, so I think I think that's good enough for that. And then, um, you know, he does then uh, go on later on uh, to say even that he could imagine a Christian theology that is atheistic, that doesn't even uh, believe in God. Um, I'm not quite sure uh, what he means by that, but uh, you know, one interpretation we could say uh, that that is relevant for us today in 2021, there is something missing, and, I, and I'll have more to say about this later at the end of this series of lectures, but there is something missing in our contemporary society um, there there is a lack of of reverence. In, in our society, you know, because of course people are not religious, and but it goes further than that. There, there, uh, there's a sort of hubris, uh, an overbearing self confidence in uh, our society at the moment, and that most clearly, in my mind, is demonstrated by the ecological cataclysm that we're moving into, and the lack of concern that people have. 
before this crisis. Uh, and there is a kind of, it seems to be a kind of harebrained idea in people's minds is that, um, that you can survive without the ecology. That you're not dependent on the ecology that supports your life. And I think in a very real and scientific way, you are utterly, absolutely dependent upon the ecology. You cannot live without the ecology. I think that makes perfect sense in a common sense, scientific way. You are absolutely dependent upon the ecology. And if you believe somehow that you're independent of the ecology, you don't get it. You're not understanding what's going on. Um, and so maybe in this atheistic uh, version of Schleiermacher's theology, we need to get back to the notion that we're absolutely dependent uh, at the bare minimum on the ecology, not just the universe in some uh, material way, but the, the world, the earth, as it has been for the last 10,000 years, uh, you know, our life is very much dependent, absolutely dependent upon that. Uh, so that's something to think about. Um, and and maybe just one more thing is that, you know, what we might experience, and you'll see is, as you live your life in the coming decades, as we do get deeper into the ecological crisis, we might see people returning to something like Schleiermacher's theology or uh, certainly to philosophy. I think that people are gonna become much more existentialist uh, in their thinking, thinking about their very existence, uh, where right now everybody, especially with social media, I know that uh, most of us are caught up in social media and just these, these uh, what used to be like the 24 hour news cycle of, of cable news now has become the 20 minute cycle of social media. So you're only thinking about the next 20 minutes, um, but we need to start really thinking much more long-term and getting serious about our dependence upon the ecology. And as that support for our very existence begins to uh, dissolve under our feet, um, I think that people will begin, begin to become uh, much more philosophical, hopefully more so philosophical, but uh, then also more religious. Um, and of course, when people become more religious and are not philosophically grounded, that can go in a lot of weird directions. So um, I don't know. So think about that.